everyone uh, to this new uh, circular coffee and conversation with me, Erica, and with <laughs> me, Sophie, <laughs> and Erica as well. <laughs> we basically lead the Circular Economy Club in uh, in Reading, and the Circular Coffee conversation came out during the first lockdown, where we wanted to find a way to keep the community game together and also grow it, and really, you know, showcase and amplify any business is doing something great around the circular economy. Um, and this first quarter, actually, we're going through a theme that is food, drink, and packaging. Um, and today we're very lucky to be uh, joined with, by Ellie, who is basically launching a new uh, zero waste um, delivery service grant um, in Reading and the local area. So that's all I'm going to say for now. The format is that Erica will get chatting with Ellie for the next 15 minutes or so. And then at the end, we'll have about 10 minutes to answer any of your questions. So if you've got any throughout the conversation, log them into the chat and then I'll step in and uh, ask Ellie that for us. So I'll pass it on to Erica. Cool. Thanks, Sophie, and uh, welcome, everyone. So as uh, Sophie said, we're chatting with Ellie Newton today from a new, we're quite excited, this is a bit of an exclusive uh, <laughs> with this new startup business in, in Reading as well called Ground Delivery. Um, first of all, to kick it off, Ellie, um, what circular conversation starter have you brought with us? What with your so today? To okay, so my circular conversation starter is going to be my water bottle. I'm not sure if this is one that other people have done before, um, but I absolutely love it. I have to say I'm quite judgmental of people who drink from plastic water bottles or like buy bottled water when there's perfectly good tap water available. I personally think it actually tastes better tap water. I'm a bit of a fan of it, um, but ultimately I just love it because obviously I can take it everywhere. It means that I don't have to uh, buy plastic water bottles. When when I'm out and about. It also keeps uh, my water unbelievably cold, which is, I think, a really, really big thing. Um, and also there are just so many places these days to fill up your water bottles, which is fantastic. You know, in all towns and cities now, you know, even small towns, there are lots of refillable places. So you never really have to be without one. And also like I used to have to like beg people at cafes and things to fill out my water bottle and kind of show them that actually it's illegal, right? They do have to do that for me if they have running water. Um, you don't even have to do that anymore. You can just use a water bottle. And as you can see, I just keep all of my hair bands on it. So if I'm ever without a hair band or need one, it's right here. I don't even have to worry about losing that as well. So absolutely love them. And this is kind of my favorite circular item that I'd say I use every single day, every single minute of every single day. And I'll, I'll like bring mine in from the side that's just sitting next to me as well. Oh, brilliant. Um, but I think that's a really great example. And I suppose connecting with, with what you do and ground um, delivery. Um, around the refill uh, elements yeah. around that, I suppose maybe that's a little bit of where your ideas have come Definitely. from. But could you could you share a little bit about um, ground delivery and maybe your, your journey or how you started it? Of course. So the story of ground completely begins with the milk ground and with the milkman um, or the milk woman. Indeed, when we were younger, really until I went to university. All of our milk came from a milkman. I grew up in Somerset. I was very lucky that I grew up in the countryside near lots of farms where we could get, you know, milk from very fresh. Um, and it was delivered, you know, three times a week in glass bottles. And it has a particularly special place in my heart because I'm a massive milk lover and I'm also a big cream lover. And so the full cream always used to come with a massive kind of blot of cream at the top, uh, which I would put on my cereal every single morning, which is probably not the healthiest way to start the day, but it was great as a kid. Um, and so, it, you know, it has great memories for me. And I just, this, the process was so simple. And that was one of our first jobs as kids. You know, it was kind of how we used to earn pocket money was by putting the, um, putting the empty jars on the doorstep, cleaning them out, giving them a wash in the sink and then putting them on the doorstep. That was the first job we got when we were kids. So it was something that I was very familiar with. And then when I got to university, when I moved out, you know, I was kind of in a, in a city and, you know, I used to buy milk, but we used to get it from the supermarket. And, it, you know, I just found that it caused so much extra waste. And I was really disappointed to find out that the full cream milk from the supermarket doesn't come with a nice bit of double cream at the top, which was really quite depressing. Um, and so then as kind of, you know, I was starting in my professional life and I wanted to look at getting, a, you know, having the milkman come again. I suddenly, it occurred to me how simple the process was and how, you know, elegantly it worked. You ordered your milk when you were finished, you put the empty bottles outside and they would collect it when they brought you, you your milk the next time they were delivering. 
And it just occurred to me that you could do that with so many other things, especially items that, you know, sit in your cupboard for a long time. Things like rice, things like, you know, dried beans, things like nuts and things that, you know, you could have a long time and you want to buy in larger quantities. Um, but that perhaps now when you get it from the supermarket comes in really unnecessary plastic packaging. It causes a massive amount of waste that's completely unnecessary. It fills up your bin. You know, I'm not a massive fan of taking the bins out, no one really is. Uh, lots of the plastic still isn't recyclable or can't be recycled even when you do put it in the recycling bin. And it's also a bit rubbish. Like, you know, you buy a big one kilogram bag of rice and then suddenly, you know, it's got a little tear in it. The rice starts pouring out every day. You know, you lose a little bit more. The rice goes bad really quickly. It's just not particularly good packaging either. And so I just thought if you could combine those two concepts, then I think you could have something that would enable people to um, eat a lot of the food that they normally do without having to you know, change the food that they eat. It would make being sustainable a lot easier. Uh, it would just make it a lot more efficient. And it would also keep food fresh for a lot longer, which would prevent food waste. So it's also plastic waste that we're dealing with, but also food waste because our, our food comes in airtight glass containers that don't, don't let air in and therefore keep your keep your food fresh. And so that's kind of where it all started. And we had some time during um, the pandemic to kind of think about it and think, how are we going to make this work? Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how it's developed. We're very new. We just started delivering uh, in Reading. And yeah, things are going really well so far. So that's kind of the story of Brand. If you're not sure what it is we actually do, we kind of, we deliver your pantry items to your door in glass jars that we then collect when you reorder. It's very simple. Um, and that's how it's working at the moment. So that's kind of the story of our company and how it started. Yeah, I like that kind of mentality of how can you take something quite, you know, it seems quite, quite simple and make mm. it easier and how to almost support switching, changing behaviours um, around that. In terms of the kind of the, the different types of products and things that you're, you're doing now, I think nuts and oats and things like that, what, how did you go around choosing the different things to, um, you know, to refill and, and reuse or, or which ones do you think are important to most important things to change behaviours around? So the products that we have on the website um, at the moment and the products that we're currently offering, it really all comes down to what we could easily get plastic free. And actually buying food wholesale plastic free is not particularly easy, actually, especially if you're trying to, you know, to keep things local and to kind of reduce carbon footprints. It's, it's really not very, it's not very simple. There aren't actually that many um, suppliers who are doing it. So that was a really big part of deciding what we were going to start off with initially. Um, we have plans to do a lot more. And we are always asking for recommendations. We have, if you go onto the shop um, page on our website, you can recommend food. Um, and actually we've already added uh, different, different items from that recommendation, including ground coriander, which is something we've started adding very recently, um, including different kinds of coffee. So yeah, I would say that, you know, it's all about making sure that the products that we're getting are as plastic free or, you know, as, at least as much as possible, um, zero waste and um, obviously as much as possible come from local areas obviously we don't grow a lot of spices here in the UK so that's always going to be slightly difficult but you know in general making sure it comes from the the, the the process between it coming from the ground and coming to us is as small as possible so that's really what uh, what determines and absolutely please do recommend products recommend them on social media and uh, we'll be expanding our range as quickly as possible as soon as we can find a way of supplying an item in a zero waste plastic free way essentially it'll be on the website with your, you mentioned just before we went, went on live, um, if you're able to deliver or cycle there. So could you explain a bit about your, your, your logistics and the supply chain of it at Absolutely. the moment? Um, so at which the moment, I think is an interesting one to be. <laughs> Carry on. It is for sure. So at the moment, we're only doing um, RG1 and kind of the center of Reading, unfortunately, at the moment, just because we're very new and we're just getting started. A um, bit of Caversham as well, but generally it's kind of the Reading, Reading town is where we're currently able to operate but gradually as we get uh, as we get bigger we'll definitely start to look at expanding again on the website you can put in your postcode and we will let you know as soon as we can deliver to you um, but the process is pretty smooth we're at the moment we're either walking or on bikes and so as soon as we can get a bike out to you if we can get a delivery person out to you on a bike that's essentially when we'll be able to start delivering to your area um, and so yeah it's always going to be as carbon neutral as possible the way that we deliver we actually do prefer walking generally is our favorite way of delivering especially if it's local 
Um, and that will obviously be great in town cities, but obviously it's not going to be so great if we're going more into the countryside and there's beautiful countryside around Reading. We definitely want to be delivering out there as well. So that's when things like bikes and in the future as well, hopefully electric vehicles uh, will be using as well. So we're going to, again, just like the products on the website, we're expanding them gradually. We'll also be ex expanding the places that we can deliver to. Yeah, I think that's an interesting area where you, I suppose, during the because of pandemic and things like this, people have shifted to much more local mm -hmm. um, as well. So I suppose that was maybe partly of the thinking behind it or that, that opportunity that you saw that, that maybe, yeah, people would be more open to local and particularly delivery rather than having to go and even, you know, some of the refill shops are sure. in Reading, mm -hmm. having to, to go there themselves as well. Um, as kind of a startup or a sustainability business in Reading, what kind of challenges potentially have you you've found or resources maybe that you found difficult to kind of find to, that could have helped you start up? I mean, as kind of Reading Climate Change Partnership and, and these types of things, they're looking at how to support, I suppose, more sustainable business, more, um, kind of sustainable behaviour change, which which you're supporting as well, what kind of things would have helped or did help? <laughs> um, I mean, I think, you know, the first thing I, you know, kind of said about the products in terms of there not being a large amount of you know, wholesalers who sell plastic free food, you know, I think that's a really big thing. We were hoping that there was going to be something more local to us. We've managed to get quite local, but not as local as we'd like. So I think a focus kind of, you know, obviously businesses, you know, businesses who sell to customers are only as good as or, you know, can only be as efficient as the suppliers that they get, you know, they, they get their produce from. Um, and so I think that that's something that I think needs to definitely have um, a bit more of a green revolution. Um, in terms of working in Reading, though, we've actually felt very supported. It's a really lovely place to get going. Um, I definitely kind of living here, we were inspired by seeing all the rubbish that's in the Thames. We walk along the Thames quite regularly and uh you know seeing the, the 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 rubbish and all of the you know debris and plastic that's in there so regularly and you know kind of in amongst the the swans is definitely something that we hope we'll be able to you know make a small difference towards um so you know it's definitely very good to be in a community where we feel like we might be able to make a little bit of a difference if we were in a bigger city i don't think we would um have as you know be able to have as much of an impact but it's nice to know that we can have an effect you know on a smaller community and hopefully obviously a bigger community as we grow as a business um but yeah i mean we've had a lot of support from the reading council which has been fantastic but again yeah i think um i think as well well actually something that would be really fantastic when we're delivering more on bikes is that if there was more bike friendly um roads and routes in reading is definitely something that i think we would all benefit from uh, and it's definitely something that would help our business nice that was an area around the bikes and bike sharing schemes and, and all of the infrastructure that came up as well with um, Joe from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah, no, and I think I'm a cyclist myself and, and delivery, I think, is a really interesting area um, that needs work on in that infrastructure to sure. support businesses as well as the logistics. Um, before I hand over, maybe we open to see if there is other questions and things in the chat, and, and we've got quite a lot of been joining, actually, during the conversation. Um, is there an organisation or topic or other type of business um, that you'd be interested to hear more about or, or we could try and get on to uh, the chat here? Uh, definitely. So a company that uh, we've kind of discovered through you know, our own work in starting our company um, is a company called uh, Happy Husks. And what they do is they uh, they create sponges for, you know, your sinks and things like that, you know, for washing up, except they're compostable. Um, they're made out of, I think they're made of vegetable fibers, uh, happy husks. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's the one. And I just think that the concept is really cool. Um, obviously, there's a big movement towards, you know, we use reusable sponges here that you throw in the washing machine. But, you know, if you're unsure about doing that, because, you know, we are in a global pandemic and you're not sure that, you're, you know, you don't want to put your washing machine up to the temperature that will be able to kill the germs uh, in the sponge. then this is something that you could do to make sure that you're not creating waste. You know, you're giving the sponge back to the environment, but you can also make sure that, you know, you're not necessarily carrying germs if you're worried about that. So happy husks, I think, you know, it's a really interesting business idea. I have no idea how it works. I've got no idea how they've managed to make this sponge that's plastic free and compostable and you know and clean job dishes so well um however you know they've done it and i think it's an it's an amazing thing and uh, i definitely think they would be a great company to to talk to 
Yeah, I think that that's a really interesting area all around them, the kind of new materials or compostable and bio kind of options as well. Just actually, I'll pick up on one thing that you mentioned there around, and I think I saw a question earlier in the chat around um, because of the COVID, <laughs> and I know that the refill and, and refilling coffee cups and all of this around hygiene kind of things, what kind of challenges have you faced there or how to get over that or maybe people's perception um, around some of the, the dangers, I suppose, that could could be worth replaying or delivery. So I, so I suppose actually obviously we started our company during a pandemic so obviously it's, we're not really used to anything else. Um, <laughs> there was advantages in that in that you know we were already in a position where you know thinking about making everything COVID safe was something we had to do from the beginning it's not like we had to change our procedure uh, our procedures and our things you know to try to you know to get in line with government standards that was what was always going to be happening from the beginning so I think in that sense it's actually been a bit of a benefit and of course people are at home a lot more during the pandemic and we don't need people to be at home for our deliveries but obviously it does you know if you if you have a bit of a swap over or you know you live in an apartment building that kind of thing you know can help sometimes so I think that's been a real positive step and you know last year they you know we we did record a little bit of a drop in carbon emissions because planes weren't going everywhere and I think this has invigorated people to think about the planet uh, in a much healthier way, think about how they can have a better effect on the planet. And I think, you know, for us, that has been a positive step because people seem to be very keen to have less of a carbon impact, especially from their own home and, you know, in terms of the things that they're, that they're throwing away. So I would say it's been a benefit to us. Um, but obviously, you know, the sooner that the pandemic ends, the better, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think that's a, an interesting like mindset shift that I hadn't really thought about that, you know, actually, because you opened during the pandemic and all of those rules were kind of there, or you had to design your business around that, that exactly. potentially everything might be, I don't know, I'm not going to say easier, growing a business or <laughs> doing a business is never going to be easier, but actually it will be a different type of shift when, when things go back to some sort of, you know, altered and more open, <laughs> open state as well. Um, Thanks so much for our little chat. What I'm going to do is pass over to Sophie now and to see any other questions. But yeah, it's been really, really inspiring to Thank hear you so some much of your. It's great to be here. As well. <laughs> and this is not finished. We still have a few questions for you. <laughs> cool. Uh, so there was one question actually around the packaging and the mm -hmm. size basically that you're using. You know, how to go larger sizes versus smaller one or just enough especially you know when we talk about herbs and spices or things like that what's the process to go through that um so actually we went through quite a lengthy process to find out what dial sizes to use uh, there was a lot of trial and error there was a lot of measuring there was a lot of you know you know there was a lot of uh, a bit of a mess but you know we got there in the end um i got one of our jars here this is one that we use for uh, ground coriander actually um and it's about i think that's 250 mils but essentially we tend to, we do have, we have really large, so we have, you know, things that might take a kilogram or a kilogram and a half of, of rice and, um, and nuts and things like that. And then we do have much, much smaller ones, things like coriander. But I think in general, our, our jars tend to be on the larger side just because we feel that, you know, if you're going to get something delivered to your jaw, you may as well get the bigger size, you know, because it's not a product that's going to go bad. It's going to stay airtight. Um, and obviously it does save money if you buy in large quantities and it saves on packaging and all that kind of stuff. So buying from us and buying a larger jar is, is what we do encourage people to do. So they tend to be on the larger side. And uh, yeah, and we generally, we measure them out. The cost of the jar is not included um, with, the, with the product because, you know, we, you know, we'll hopefully get it back from you when you, re when you reorder uh, to make, you know, the circular element of the business work. So we did go through a bit of trial and error with the, with the jars, but we think we've got that down now. <laughs> is about starting a business <laughs> you try different things to see what works i was wondering if anyone has got any other question put them in the chat i know there's one from ula so i'll ask that one at the end i just had a, um, a question and a thought around you know the, the community aspect so you work with individuals and so on but do you see that people start sharing more say at street level and saying actually i'm going to get a grand delivery does anyone else need something so that's a we try to have do you have do you see anything like that or not yet 
Um, I mean, we haven't really considered, we kind of, you know, we're all on an individual basis at the moment, but that's definitely something that we could look at doing, you know, especially if, you know, we're going to one particular area, obviously, um, even if we're on a bike, you know, the less we have to go out in that particular direction, generally the better. So, yeah, I think that's definitely something we could see uh, doing, especially if it makes it more efficient. I think efficiency is a really big key of climate change, uh, just making everything more efficient and just eliminating waste as much as possible. So definitely, and we'll also look to expanding out into businesses as well. So if you're a business and you want to order your coffee and your tea and things like that from us and that's something that we'd like to be able to do in the future as well because that's definitely larger um, bigger bulk um, items as well um, so yeah hopefully there'll definitely be a kind of a more of a community element to it as we go through um, and people sharing in, you know, in the same future in the same apartment building you know if we could su supply an apartment building with you know certain kinds of food you know in very large quantities and that would also be fantastic so yeah that's we do we do definitely have plans to uh, increase the increase the community element of the company and we hope that you know the circular element of it knowing that the jar that you used you know will have been used by someone else at some point in time obviously it would have been washed and sanitized and go through a very a very uh important cleaning process in between those two things but you know at least you know that it's something that was used by someone else at another point in time and that it's not something that's going to go to waste and i think that will also help to hopefully bring people together and feel good about using our service i think there's something really important in that you say like just bring people together everyone needs it you know we need those happy moments basically yeah. So, did you actually on the collaboration aspect you know there is of course the community but also collaborating with other businesses or people you know in the same sphere as you mm -hmm. that is something that is shaping or taking shape in Reading I hope so yeah I mean we've already been you know contacted by a few people who are selling really interesting products that are to do with zero waste even though that's products that you know eliminate uh, plastic in certain areas like you know different kinds of really cool food storage like Tupperware and things like that um, or people who want you know who, who have uh, reusable things uh, such as makeup containers and things like that we, you know we've already been you know contacted by some of those people and we hope to start you know being able to deliver those as well because then we can kill a couple of birds with uh, one stone um, and so yeah I definitely feel there's been a community element to it you know I think Reading is a great place I think it's a place that clearly um, wants to do better for the environment and really cares about you know the city and hopefully it's going to be heading towards a greener city in the very near future. Yeah, fantastic. We're starting having a lot of questions. Just <laughs> Please, more, more than Maria. <laughs> yes. So there was a question around the supply chain and so on. So clearly mm -hmm. you're really, you know, focusing on making sure you've got the circularity aspect. Mm -hmm. How does that work with your supplier? Do you see that they've got a similar focus? Yeah, so we we all different plastic free suppliers, uh, which took us a while, a while to research, but you know we did get there in the end. We found a great plastic free supplier. Um, we actually get our, our products actually get delivered in compostable bags, so they then go into the compost when we're done with them, um, which is which is fantastic. Um, so that's you know how that works. It's a great chain, and they're very keen on plastic free as well. I think we we wouldn't be able to do it if there weren't wholesalers out there. Again, we wish there were some that were you know in, in Reading even that would be fantastic that had more of that kind of focus. Um, but the one we've got at the moment is fantastic. Okay, cool. And there is one more question around. So we, we talked a lot around the, the packaging, basically, mm -hmm. and how that is being delivered and so on. But I guess maybe a little bit less about the food that is in it. And mm -hmm. the question about, you know, what is basically your focus or how do you choose, I guess, the product? And do you know about the origins and so on? Yeah, so we generally uh, choose products that are come from as local as possible, or again, like we said, have got the smallest process between, uh, you know, it coming from the ground and coming to us. Um, and so, again, that's something that we're really thankful for our supplier for. They are a very ethical company. Um, they've been doing this actually since the 70s. They've been focusing on ethical supplying food and have kind of made it um, quite big in recent years, which is fantastic. Um, and I suppose that element of it and also just, you know, making sure that we have good conversations with them, making sure that we know that they're in touch with the with the farmers who are supplying them. Um, and actually, ideally, we'd like to start kind of if we ever move into say fresh food, for example, in the future, we hope to be able to get that from farms around Reading. That's really our, our plan. That's super exciting. We can't wait. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So it's going to get to, to, to that time where we need to wrap up. There was a final question around, tell us a bit more about where we can find you basically and follow you. Yes. Yeah, so if you just head to the Grand website, it's www.ground.delivery. Um, and then you can find us all there. Really sorry if we don't currently deliver to where you're living, but please do let us know where you're living and we will do as much as we can to get out to you as quickly as possible. 
um we just you know we want to make sure that everyone's involved as much as possible so do let us know we absolutely do take into account and we absolutely will start expanding um especially as we can kind of get more bikes and things out to those different places so that's where you can find us with instagram page please do follow us as well i think with brown delivery uh on instagram um but yeah thank you so much for, for you know letting us come here and yeah you can find us on our website grand grand dot delivery that's fantastic thank you i think it was like so inspiring listening to all your stuff and launching during covid and with that amazing potential that you've got there so thank you so much for being with us today well thank you for having me i think this whole thing is fantastic and obviously you know being able to suggest another company and then that you yeah. know just creates this domino effect which is brilliant so thank you so much for having keeping me the, keeping the momentum pleasure so just before wrapping up for everyone else so we've got next week we've got Anne-Marie and Ayo from the plastic free kind of Kavisham and the local council joining us so we'll talk more about this aspect. And then the last session on food, drink and packages is going to be with Toast Ale. And we're moving, we're making it a bit for different ones. We're moving from circular coffee to circular beer. So it's going to be <laughs> an evening <laughs> chat at 6.30. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, he's a super inspirational uh, speaker again. So it would be brilliant to have you there. And he also very kindly gave us um, a discount, basically, if we want to eat to order uh, some toast beer on the website. So if you want to come and join us, make sure you plan a bit of time just to get the delivery and then we can all toast um, a beer there. And I think something that was really exciting last week, we had um, Emily from Oatbox and they basically do veg boxes out of surplus vegetables and fruits. And she was saying that actually they've made a partnership with toast and in March, there is a, a toast ale and odd box beer that is being launched basically uh, as a special uh, one. So we're like, it's probably a good one for us to test as well. Anyway, so <laughs> that's it really for today. Thank you so much for joining us and hopefully see you in two weeks time. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone.